is a second year university student from the Listogush First Nations community. He never thought he would be able to come back to the school after what he went through. It was a process of shame. I knew I did something wrong, but having to go through that in the community to see you put, be put in the car, to see the, you being taken out of your uh, community and then you're driven in, in cuffs and your ankles are cuffed and all your rights are taken away from you. You have no say at all. In November 2003, Frank was arrested and was taken to jail. I was um, involved in a, in, in, a, um, in a situation with an Aboriginal woman where I had uh, physically uh, performed violence against her and uh, this resulted in uh, an arrest. Only in jail, Frank did realize that his abusive way of life brought him there. Frank says he developed serious addictions to alcohol and drugs at a very young age and even considered suicide. After a failed attempt at suicide, um, I didn't want to actually kill myself. I, I believe it was more of along the lines of um, having to give up and, and looking around at the community I lived in and the world that I lived in and the, uh, the dismal condition of always drinking and nothing to look forward to that this sort of option was real. Domestic violence that brought Frank to jail always played a special part in his life. He grew up in the First Nations community in the early 70s and saw physical abuse in his own family. I lived with uh, three other brothers. Uh, we lived in a family where my father was the breadwinner and my mother was the stay-at-home mom. Um, there was alcohol in the family that my father would uh, utilize as part of, you know, the working man's pastime was to drink and things like that. Sonia Perley, the policy coordinator of the Aboriginal Women's Issues branch, thinks domestic violence should be viewed as a part of cycle. Like an abusive relationship, it's a cycle. It's an intergenerational cycle. Um, you also have to look at the influence um, of residential school and on parenting and um, just on the well-being of um, developing and uh, raising like healthy individuals. St. Mary's First Nation Chief Candace Paul has seen the problem of domestic abuse on her reserve. She thinks it's where many native men cope with harsh reality of life after residential schools. I think after they're done, um, they feel very sorry and very remorseful for it, but at the time, you know, uh, going through that, I don't think they can cope with some of the um, the, the things that they've been through. The colonial administration opened the first residential schools in the 19th century. It wanted to assimilate native children into mainstream society. The school forced apart many kids and their parents and caused suffering to First Nations families across Canada. The last school closed only 20 years ago. But St. Thomas University Native Studies Director Andrea Bay Nicholas says violence against Aboriginal women can all be blamed on residential schools. I've read enough, enough about colonialism around the world that the um, phenomenon of women abuse or abuse of women, the phenomena of um, drug abuse and alcoholism and all of the related poverty, all of those are situations that are direct consequences of a colonial situation and a colonial arrangement. Traditionally, the role of native women and men were equal in the First Nations communities. A woman was considered a life giver and regarded with highest respect. But colonialism changed all that. Today, native communities in Canada face more complex problems. High rate of alcohol and drug abuse, youth suicide rates, poverty, lack of social services and housing. Barbara Martin, an Aboriginal women's rights activist, said the violence against Aboriginal women is often overlooked among many on and off reserve. And not speaking about it normalizes violence in the Aboriginal communities. Children are breaking down the um, windows in the schools. That's an indicator. 
help us. Suicide happening, help us. So the amount, immense amount of pain and nobody's addressing it. Nobody's made it into a priority. So people feel this is it. This is normal. Violence against Aboriginal women has long been a national concern. Stats can figure show more than 500 Aboriginal women are missing across Canada. 24% experience domestic violence. This number is three times higher than would be for non-native women. The government of New Brunswick, in cooperation with First Nations communities, has come up with this strategy to end violence against Aboriginal women in New Brunswick. The framework was introduced in March 2008, but the document is only recommendations, not yet fully implemented policies. Sonia Perla says there is still a long road ahead. I think the first step is creating more of an awareness on the issue of violence against Aboriginal women, as well as getting an understanding of basically the history of Aboriginal people, um, because I think there's a, there's a huge gap in awareness um, around um, just the whole impact of colonization and the whole loss and breakdown of our culture that has played a significant role on a number of the issues that we're seeing in our communities today. Going to jail for Frank was a chance to look back at his life and understand the reasons behind his behavior so he could change his life for the better. He says the more he pushed his culture away, the more he went down the wrong way. I'll admit I didn't like to be a native person. I didn't like who, what my culture was, my heritage. Um, but now that I see it as an advantage and I see it as who I am, I stopped hiding. I stopped uh, putting things on. My, we call in our culture the mask wearers, people who wear these masks to portray a certain lifestyle or personality. Um, you stop wearing these masks and uh, you start living your life without alcohol and drugs. Alcohol and drugs were that mask. And, and I started to appreciate my culture. I started to want to learn my language. I started to believe that I could make a difference despite all these hardships that are going on in Canada with Aboriginal youth. And it's that culture that gave that to me. Frank says only when he could accept reality, accept who he was, and be proud of his culture and heritage, only then he could find the lost connection to his culture and the hope and strength to be a better person. I'm away, my we all.